Hi YouTube, this is Patrick and this is my review of Breaking Bad Season 5 Episode 2, uh, Madrigal it was called. Um, I guess first I'll talk about the uh, the cold open, um, or maybe first I'll just say a very solid episode, slower than the first one, but that's okay, we're in, we're in the building stage before everything goes to shit, so um, yeah, so solid episode. Uh, I'll talk about the cold open a little bit, um, the whole... Uh, the head of the, the, the Madrigal, like, I guess, corporation or whatever it is that was funding Gus, um, he got to kill himself. Um, I thought it was interesting that he kind of put everything on a hook and, you know, very, very, very neat, much like Gus. Um, honestly, the show's so awesome that I thought for a second he was going to be a character, he's going to be around for multiple episodes and this, that, and the other, and then he's just gone, you know, right away. Uh, also, again, visually, the show's so good that the bathroom he, he killed himself in, it reminded me of, like, The Shining, just the color of the, the red and everything like that. Um, so think of it about a Kubrick film while watching, you know, Breaking Bad. It's just ridiculous. Um, but yeah, and I love the idea that the cold opens on this show just are a part of, yet separate from the rest of the episode. I love when, when this show does that. I hope they keep doing it all season long. I really do. Um... Uh, that'll depend, I guess, on whatever the cliffhanger is from the previous episode. But still. Um, okay, first. I um, I guess I'll talk about Hank first. Uh, I'll get to Mike and everyone else. I'll talk about Hank first. Hank um, was, you know, all the, the Germans and everything were cooperating with him and the DEA now. Plus we saw that woman Lydia, who I'll get to in a minute. Um, yeah, basically, it's... It's nice to see that Hank was right. It sucks that the DAA was stepping... The, the one head was stepping down. Um, but, um, you know, it, it was a really, really, like, kind of intense scene. Very quite intense scene where, you know... Obviously, whatever he was saying about Gus... I like the little touch of... Um, he cooks his fish the way Gus, you know, Gus kind of taught him still. Um... You know, the whole point is always, you know, to, you know, make us, you know, think about Hank and Walt right underneath him. I gotta say, I really, really, really hope that Hank never suspects Walt. I hope it just goes from Hank is trying to find Heisenberg, he gets close, and then he finds out it's Walt. I hope he never just, like, kind of gradually suspects Walt. I really hope that it's just a complete, you know, just, like, blast to the face that it's Walt, for him, anyway. Um... Yeah, I, just, I mean, I, I really hope so. I, I mean, some people in the audience might think, like, oh, all this evidence is piling up, figure it out. But, you know, uh, not to his character, his point of view, it's not that way. So, um, yeah, so I hope that goes about uh, it goes about it that way. Um, I guess I just moved to Mike. This was a Mike episode completely. Um, and I love Mike. Yeah, Jonathan Banks, who plays Mike, is fantastic. And who, who would think that this is a character that everyone would just completely, like, kind of, like, fall in love with? I mean, I don't know anyone that doesn't like Mike. Um, he's just, um, yeah, he's just fantastic. I never thought I'd care about him, but I really, really do. I care about what happens to him. Um, and this episode felt like a, a just a pure character episode for him for the most part. Um, which, again, because I have 16 episodes to end the show, we're gonna get character stuff like this. Um, and Mike might not be in, you know, an episode coming up or something like that. Specifically, like, Marie hasn't been in any episodes yet this season. Yeah, I bet she'll get an episode that's going to probably, if not revolve around her, you know, have a lot of her. Um, but it's only going to if she, you know, is going to be doing something of interest. Um, so, yeah, so I expect to see Marie probably, hopefully next week, I would think. But um, but we'll see on that. But anyway, as far as Mike goes, um, I really thought Walt, uh, I thought his speech to Walt about, you know, waiting for the, the boom to go off was just, was really awesome. Uh, because it's a boom that we know is coming from the cold open from the first episode. Um, so I like that Mike sees the very dark end that the show's heading to. Um, and I really thought actually Walt was going to pull one of his like master schemes and trick him in this episode to get him to get on his side. Um, but of course that didn't happen. And it didn't happen because they've done that already and the show knows that people probably were expecting maybe Walt to do something. Um, and so they gave us something completely different, which uh, again, why I love the show. Um, the, uh, the scene where he was interrogated by Hank, it was great because you didn't know who to root for. It's like, it's, it's great to see Hank is, 
completely in control and he knows he's right and he's so confident, you know, as opposed to early last season and season th- some stuff in season three. Um, so that's great, but, you know, it's also you don't want Mike to get caught. And um, it was just a really, really well back, well done back and forth. And then we see Mike's weakness, weakness, which is his granddaughter. Um, it just stops him cold. And he still doesn't give Hank anything, so we just still see Hank just, you know, just, ugh, didn't get it. Didn't quite get it yet. Um, so you kind of feel bad for both of them when the scene ends, I think, a little bit. Um, the Yeah, so that is, you know, pretty much his weakness. And I love how the show is so good at symbolism. When Mike goes and kills the two guys, that basically, you know, it's Lydia's fault. And I'll, again, I'll get to Lydia in a second. Um... I love the symbolism of, of Mike using his granddaughter's toy to block the, um, you know, to block the uh, the peephole and everything like that. It's basically just the way Mike works. He uses his granddaughter probably as a front for certain things. Not uses her, but it's just, it's a part of his character that his granddaughter is like, uh, her toys are now coming into play for, you know, for him to use when he kills people. Um, it's just one step, it's just, I guess, represents one step closer to everything affecting him personally. I think, anyway. Maybe that's looking into it too much, but for this show, I really don't think so. Um, But, yeah. Um, Yeah, you know, I'll just get to Lydia. Um, She is a time bomb, pretty much like Walt. You know, we saw already she does not handle pressure well, and there's nothing but more pressure coming. And, um... So she's an interesting, interesting, you know, thing that's going to be thrown into the mix. She's going to get the ingredients... Uh, I guess for them to cook the meth that they're going to need to cook, which, um, uh, again, I really, I honestly, I thought the episode was going to end with Mike killing her, but she's screaming and Mike was got to kill like the little girl just because I thought they would do something, do something really shocking. But again, um, they do something that feels much more natural, which is using, you know, her to get the ingredients that Walt and Jesse need, uh, which is just great as always. Um, but I just love that. Mike knows she's unstable, completely unstable, yet he's keeping her around and he's joining Walt and Jesse and everything. And he's just adding, even though he knows he said the, the boom is coming, he, with her he just added fuel, you know, for that boom to be even bigger. And um, it's, uh, and now he is firmly putting himself in grave danger and, um, you know, the whole episode, if someone thought this episode was a little boring or whatever, you know, one, you don't get it. And two, I think what happens with Mike in this episode is going to have repercussions for whatever whatever his fate's going to be. Because uh, he chose to stick around. That was the point. And um, so whatever happens this episode, um, you know, is the cause of whatever effect is coming. And... Um, yeah, and obviously, you know, he didn't kill her also because I think the little girl kind of reminding him of his granddaughter, so just more weakness uh, of his character. And um, it's just awesome. It's really, really, really awesome. Um, I guess I'll get to... I'll just talk about Walt and, Walt and Jesse. Walt hid the real ricin, um, which anything with the show we know, consequences are coming. He hid the ricin. That ricin will be used at some point before the show ends. Um, so I love that that's something we have to keep in the back of our heads that it's gonna, you know, who's gonna get killed by that? Because somebody will. Um, and, uh, and the, let's say, uh, also the, the, the awesome great soundtrack from the show, just using whatever random song when they were looking for the rice in, at, um, at Jesse's place. And I love the, that they brought back the little, the little vacuum cleaner thing and that Walt used it, um, and I gotta say, Aaron Paul has not had a lot to do in these first two episodes. His, like, Magnets bitch line in the first episode was great, but, um, you know, he has not a lot. Didn't have a lot to do this episode either. But that scene, man, that scene where he was so upset about what he almost did to Walt, it was simultaneously... It was basically like, look, Aaron Paul deserves his Emmy nominations because he's fantastic. He's, he's just great. But, um... It was just so awful to watch because Walt's comforting him like this father figure and Walt is the cause of like all this pain. It was such a great, you know, thing where we feel so bad for Jesse, but we hate Walt that much more. Um, and that, you know, 
transition to Scarface is 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 just becoming more and more you know apparent with every with every passing scene. And that one that one might have been the worst I think uh, you know of all because we just see how much how badly Jesse just doesn't see it. Um, so yeah, but Aaron Paul was fantastic in the scene. Um, and and even like yeah. Wall talked about cooking again, and Jesse wasn't even interesting. And Jesse, Jesse turns like cooking, and he was just, you know, he's just gonna follow his lead and just follow him right into hell until he finds out the truth, I guess. So, um, so yeah. Then even the scene with Saul, Saul was clearly intimidated by Walt, and Walt's clearly in charge now. Um, that comes off last week's scene, which I did not mention, I'm sorry, uh, in my last week's review. Um, but, uh, but anyway, uh, Walter Jr. had breakfast. Yes. Um, Skyler, the scene with Skyler and Walt in bed, in, uh, not the ending one, the one where he wakes her up. I thought it was very odd. We didn't see either of their faces. I don't know if that's supposed to represent, you know, that they both have masks on. And we're just not seeing their true selves, I guess. Um, if that's how you want to interpret it. I, you know, it was just odd that it was just shot at a certain, like, angle where we just didn't see her face and we didn't see him. But whatever. Um, yes, I have notes if you're wondering. Um... I just love how Walt is so confident. Like, Mike calls him, says he's in, and Walt's just like, yeah, Walt is so at ease. Everyone else is, you know, running around for all this stuff, and Walt is just, like, completely chill because he, he knows it's all going to go well for him because how could it go wrong, except we all know that it's going to go wrong. Um, so it's almost a little more satisfying now. Um, and, yeah, I'll just get to the end scene. If I thought last week's scene was, like, chill, like this one was so much worse. It reminded me of the pilot uh, where Walt came in and kind of just, you know, randomly had sex with Skyler, but that was more comedic. Uh, this wasn't, this was almost near, I, I can't, I, you know, I don't know if he was about to try to have sex with her, or he was just getting more comfortable with her, or she was getting less uncomfortable, which he should have noticed, by the way, but, um, it's just awful, you know, once again, she's just trapped, and, um, you know, he's like, oh, it's going, you know, it's gonna get easier, like, with everything with Ted, it's like, it gets easier for some people like you, people that have it in them, I don't think she does, I think she's gonna crumble, um, from all this, which could really have repercussions with, with Marie and everything else, and with Walter Jr. and all that stuff, so, yeah. I think that's all I got for this one. Really good episode, looking forward to the next week, as always. Um, yeah, that's it. Alright, let me know what you guys thought, and, um, yeah, I'll see you next week.